the 6.5 Creedmoor versus the 308. Two long range cartridges, and we're going to talk about them right now. Hello, everyone. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by Ammo.com. Uh, we usually compare pretty dissimilar cartridges here, but today I think we have uh, two rounds that really do fill similar roles in the hunting world, at least. The 6.5 Creedmoor and the 308. Now, the 6.5 Creedmoor, Chris, I understand was conceived solely as a long-distance competition round, but its accuracy inevitably made it popular among deer hunters. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Dave. And, uh, you know, before we dig into this, I want to make sure uh, for all of our listeners, make sure you click on that link down in the description or in the pinned comment. Get on our email list and make sure you get your free $20 off coupon on your next ammo order. This is our little special gift to you for watching our video. But Dave, you are 100% right. This comparison is going to be incredibly close. Some of our other comparisons have been so dissimilar that we're like, okay, this one's good for this and that one's good for that. This is going to be splitting some hairs on this one. I'm not going to lie. The 308 Winchester, of course, has the pedigree, right? It came after the Korean War, started in Vietnam, Uh, with the M14 and then was kind of transitioned out to more just like machine gun work with the M60 and then of course long range shooting with the Remington 700 and our our sniper round. But the 6.5 Creedmoor uh, is a round that I am really excited about. I can't say that I've personally shot this. Uh, I'm looking forward to very soon, I have to tell you. But uh, this one came from a competitive mindset first. Uh, It was at the national matches where this kind of was, honestly, I feel like it was like a bar napkin type thing. You hear about the guys going to the bar and they're complaining about something and somebody whips out a napkin and a pen and they start writing stuff down like, oh, yeah, we're going to fix this. We're going to fix that. At the national matches, they were using some Wildcat cartridges uh, and I believe it was Dennis DeMille. Uh, who you know was the the person who basically made the six five Creedmoor, and uh, they were having problems with these these wildcats that they were using, and he and you know another ballistician sat down and they're like, okay, what's going to be the perfect long range cartridge? And the six point five Creedmoor is basically what they came up with. It's got lighter recoil than a three to eight. It's got a better trajectory. And, uh, you know, it can get out actually further than a thousand yards. So that's its pedigree. It was wildcatters sitting down Mm -hmm. designing their ideal cartridge. And this just speaks to me as a reloader, right? Uh, Because these are some guys who are just like, they are into the hand loading. When you're shooting long distance like they are at the national matches and things like that, uh, you want as consistent ammunition as possible. And... When you're having problems with extraction and things like that on your Wildcat cartridge, it can be really frustrating and basically kind of want to make you take your rifle and throw it in the dirt uh, and stomp off. Uh, kind of similar to a golfer who gets you know upset at his pitching wedge and chucks it in the in the water trap. Yeah, like a uh, like I kind of said, so six point five Creedmoor never used in combat. I mean, not yet. Maybe, maybe they have. I know there's always that caveat, like black ops guys can do whatever they want. Mm-hmm. So maybe one did bring a 6.5 Creed more. I know it's named after a historic shooting range in Long Island. Yes. So that to me just kind of underscores the fact that this is solely a recreational cartridge that was designed for target shooting, but which became embraced by hunters who appreciated just how how accurate it can be. What, what kind of effective range are we talking about with a 6.5 CM? Uh, about 1,200, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and you, that kind of outclasses the 308, doesn't it? Considerably. Uh, it is tough to get a 308 uh, out to 1,000 yards. You have to hand load, to be honest with you. Uh, you really need some specialized ammo. And I do want to caveat one thing you mentioned uh, about the fact that the 6.5 hasn't seen combat yet. Uh, SOCOM, U.S. SOCOM, did some tests uh, between... Uh, several rounds, including the 300 Win Mag and the 6.5 mm-hmm. Creedmoor was included in that. And they found that their snipers doubled their hit percentage at 1,000 yards using the 6.5 Creedmoor. So there has been a lot of talk that they might be switching out uh, the 308 and moving towards this, the 6.5. That's amazing to me. The Wildcatters might have designed the, 
U.S. Armed Forces next sniping round, totally inadvertently. It's crazy. And like you mentioned before, the hunters really picked up on this. Uh, and I think a lot of it has to do with just the recoil and the trajectory. Uh, the The bullet drop on the 6.5 is is a bit less than a 308. I don't want to say quite a bit because when you're getting out to distances that long, you're going to have bullet drop no matter how fast or light your cartridge is. But uh, the 65 really lets you get those longer bullets that have that really high ballistic coefficient that really help it stabilize at long distance and fight that, uh, you know, that wind resistance. Yeah. Totally. I mean, uh, 6.5 millimeter, what would that be in our traditional caliber metric? Oh, gosh, you're putting me on the spot here. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. No, Look it's it okay. Just in case you want to hem and haw. Oh, no problem. No problem. No. It is obviously below 30. I think it's about a 226, if memory uh, Yeah. Okay. 0.2644 inches. Nailed it. Nailed it on the first nice. try. I can do so math on stream. A, <laughs> you're talking about a narrower bullet. Yeah. And I know, you know, I know there's no definitive comparison to make between wider and narrower bullets. Mm -hmm. But generally, I know a, a, a narrower bullet like that is going to have a higher sectional density. It's more yes. efficient at piercing soft tissue. Yeah. So sectional density is a, a measure of how we can evaluate penetration of a round. Uh, of course, you want kinetic energy when you're hunting. You need to have that power to, you know, hit the animal hard enough to cause a fatal wound. But you also need to get deep enough to get into those, you know, uh, vital organs and make sure that we have a clean and ethical kill. Now, a, a smaller bullet like that is going to localize all that force onto a smaller point, uh, making it push in there harder. Uh, and faster. This is why you see, you know, a lot of like with the five five six, which is an even smaller, which is a you know point two two four. It really penetrates deep because it has a pretty high sectional density, and it can really push through because it localizes all that force into a smaller point. Yeah, and uh, on that note, I know narrower bullets generally boast better ballistic coefficients as well. Yes and no. Uh, so the ballistic coefficient, it's kind of a double-edged sword because usually you want like your heavier bullets, right? right. I'm a huge fan of the 175 Sierra Match Kings for 308s. Uh, and it's counterintuitive because a lot of people prefer the 168 you know, match bullets. That's what I know a lot of police snipers use and things like that. I have a friend who is a former SWAT sniper. Uh, he extensively trained on the 168s. And when I started talking to him about the 175, he's like, oh, I don't know about that. The heavier bullets will typically have a higher ballistic coefficient because they can resist that wind resistance a bit better. Also, they're going to be a bit longer and more slender, so they'll be more aerodynamic. So it's kind of a give and take. It comes down to bullet design, honestly, is really what it comes down to. So, you know, even though a 6.5 Creedmoor is going to be a little bit lighter, it's going to be a little bit longer, thinner, more aerodynamic uh, than your some of your 30 caliber options. So, so really narrow bullet, you can't draw any conclusions as to whether it's just going to be more accurate or not. It's too many other things to consider. Yeah, there's a lot of things that go into it. And it's a rather complex calculation that I think that most of our, you know, our viewers would kind of get the deer in headlights look if we went through every aspect of how ballistic coefficient is, you know, determined. And there are mm -hmm. multiple ballistic coefficients. Uh, so that's well beyond the scope of this, uh, you know, this video. But I think what's important to uh, to just realize is the more aerodynamic a bullet is, the better off it's going to be at fighting that wind resistance and it's going to cut through the air, you know, more smoothly. And that's really what it comes down to. The 6.5 has a bit higher ballistic coefficient than most of its 308 bullet counterparts. Of course, this is a bullet to bullet comparison. So I know somebody's going to be down in the comments and be like, Chris, Dave, what are you talking about? This one specific bullet for 6.5 is less than the comparable one to 308. Okay, you're right. There are some that will be a little bit better for either, uh, you know, cartridge. But I think the big takeaway here is most of the time your 6.5 Creedmoor is going to have the higher ballistic coefficient because the bullet's more aerodynamic. I... um. Want to know what 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 about the six point five Creedmoor? It seems to have uh, 
perfected its its calibers design because this is not the first 0.264 inch diameter round. I mean, the Italians are fighting with the 6552 Carsano in World War yep. II, but I haven't heard of anyone firing that since uh, since Lee Harvey Oswald did. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Uh, Definitely not really popular here in the States. And I think that's somewhat, you know, cartridge bias. I'll be honest with you. I I think that a lot of American shooters look at it like Europeans in their 6.5s. I'll take a 308 (laughs) over that any day. And I I think that sometimes we kind of have that bias. Like it was good enough for grandpa in World War II, so it's good enough for me. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the best option. Uh, And I think that the 6.5 millimeter bullets are starting to become a lot more popular here in the States, especially with the Creedmoor. Uh, I know we have others like the, uh, what is it, the 6.5 Grendel uh, is becoming more popular. Then there's the the 6, if we want to go up a little bit, there's a 6.8 Remington SPC. Uh, So those are becoming more popular as well. And it's, I think it's just one of those things where it's a, you know, a cultural thing, honestly, uh, because we've been so, you know, engrossed with like the 30 out six and the 308, uh, and then the, the five, five, six. And it's like something in the middle seems a little strange to us. Fair enough. Fair enough. And yet at least we're proving we're open-minded because, uh, for how recently it was introduced, I think it was around 2008, if I'm wrong, sue me, but not, not many new rifle rounds, get any kind of love i mean like see the 30 thompson centered yep for for an example of how a round could just become obsolete the day it's announced at the shot show almost but um interestingly i think the 6.5 creedmoor was actually adapted from the 30 thompson center now that i say it I believe that is what they used for the parent cartridge. I need to go back and double check on that just to be sure. Uh, But yes, it is one of those things that we see a lot, right? Especially with adaptations to the AR-15 or the AR-10. We see a lot of wildcat cartridges come around or boutique cartridges, whatever you want to call them, that never really catch on. I mean, how many of us have fired a 500 Beowulf out of an AR-15? I can say that I haven't. I would like to. Uh, But it's not something that really just picked up. And, you know, it it comes down to a question is like, is it better than a 308 or is it better than a 30-06 or is it better than a 5.56? And for a lot of cartridges, the answer to that is no. Uh, And it just comes down to ease of access, in my opinion, and ease of finding parts. So for if you want to do like a, a 6.5 Grendel in an AR-15, of course you can, but it's not the easiest switch because you got to get new magazines, you got to get new, uh, you know, a new bolt, you have to get a new barrel, and there's a lot of cost involved in that. And mm-hmm. then, of course, you got to find ammo. True, true, which is becoming easier and easier as more and more people Thank embrace the 6.5. Um, I have to say, ask. I'm, yeah, go oh, ahead. I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, no, you're fine. Go ahead. <laughs> we're, we're very polite podcasters. I gotta exactly. say, the 308 I've heard can manage pretty much any North American game, but I've never heard of anyone using a 6.5 Creedmoor for game larger than Whitetail. Is this something you could theoretically use to take big game? I think you definitely could. I mean, you hear people using something like a 270 on elk. Uh, Mm -hmm. you know, all the time. And it comes down to shot placement is really what it comes down to. Now, is a 308 going to be a little bit better because it has one, a bigger, fatter bullet, you're going to make a bigger hole and does it have a bit more kinetic energy? And I'd say, yes, it does. Uh, If I'm going to be hunting, you know, black bear or brown bear or something like that, I'm probably going to lean more towards a 30 or something even bigger, especially if it's brown bear. Uh, Can you do it with a 6.5? Absolutely. It will get the job done. It has the penetration. It has the the kinetic energy to do the job. But is it going to be as forgiving as like a 308? And I would say probably not. Uh, I feel like a 308 is going to be the better choice for those bigger game. It's not to say that you can't do it. It's just going to make your life a bit easier. I feel like you've gotten to the core there. 308, less accurate at the same ranges. A uh, thousand plus yards, but more powerful. Oh, so yeah. is that is that the trade off? But how, but how like how huge of a trade off is it? Is it is it enough to actually base your decision to buy one or the other on? I think honestly, 
it comes down to a question of what range are you expecting to engage these game animals at? Uh, you know, if you're taking a thousand yard shot on a deer, I'm going to have to question your, you know, your, your ethic, uh, your ethics basically as a hunter at that point, because how many people can actually practice at a thousand yards? The type of spread you're getting, even if you're a one, you have a one MOA rifle at a thousand yards. That's a ten inch spread. That's pretty big. Uh, you know that can be the difference between wounding the poor thing and you know having an ethical shot or just completely missing it. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I would hope more for the complete miss as opposed to wounding the poor thing. But I, it come that's really what it comes down to. Is like is under let's say five hundred yards. I think that's a fairly reasonable uh, you know shot. That's a pretty long range shot for hunting. Uh, there's yeah. no doubt about that. Are you going to see a whole lot of difference between these two cartridges in, within 500 yards? Probably not all that much. I would say the 6.5 is going to have a little bit better trajectory at 500 than the 308. 308 is going to have a little bit more energy uh, is really what it comes down to. And so I think that's kind of why a lot of people would, you know, lend or lean rather towards interchanging them because of the distance. Good point. Nah. So within practical distances, I mean, you know, assuming you're not uh... – a black ops sniper you're really not going to get a huge accuracy advantage by by choosing one of the other with the caveat that the 6.5 creedmoor's trajectory is just a little bit flatter yeah that's my opinion and i think the animal's not going to be able to tell the difference uh, I mean, let's be honest. If your shot placement is is good, uh, you've got a solid platform, you put the bullet where it needs to go, the white tail, the elk, is going to have no idea, idea that it got hit with a 6.5 versus a 308. Huh. We touched on this in a previous podcast where we were talking about the 308, mm -hmm. but both of these rounds are, are pretty much not not your go-to choices for home defense. Oh, absolutely not. Uh, I would not employ either of these for that uh, use uh, because it's just too much. Uh, it's too big of a bullet. Uh, and I know some people be like, you could never have too big of a bullet. Okay, yeah. I'm not breaking out the 50 BMG to, you know, attack an assailant that's, you know, 15 feet away from me. It's just not practical. Plus, there's the sound issue uh, inside your house. The reverberations off the wall are going to be deafening. You could have permanent hearing damage. And then, of course, the big thing that I harp on all the time, over-penetration. That 308 and that 6.5 Creedmoor are going to blast through barriers. It's going to go through, uh, you know, drywall and sheetrock like it was. Well, I won't say it wasn't even there. But a hot knife through butter, I think, is a pretty uh, accurate description. And you don't want to send your round into your neighbor's apartment or your neighbor's house. It's just too much bullet for home defense. I'm thinking of shooting a home invader with a 50 BMG. Right. It probably, it probably banishes ancestors' ghosts <laughs> from the afterlife with that kind of power. Not only do you kill the attacker, you kill his spirit as well. <laughs> um, so to kind of go back a little bit, I mean, let's just talk pure competitive shooting, mm -hmm. which, you know, the 308, if you're skilled with it, you could do amazing things. Oh, yeah. But the 6.5 developed that much more recently by people who are solely interested in long distance accuracy and not trying to create a battle rifle mm -hmm. does does a 6.5 just is it a no-brainer that's the one you should prefer if if you're only interested in accuracy and dominating a competitions i think yes honestly now if you have a com competition rifle in 308 it doesn't mean you need to go out and sell it uh you know the 308 can do the job it has won multiple competitions to thousand yards uh you know for decades and i'm not going to sit here and tell you like no you need to sell the thing now if you would like to sell it as a discount just pm me here uh, on youtube <laughs> in the comments and let me know and i will give a good home to your competition 308 rifle uh to help you fund your next 6.5 Five, but all joking aside, if you are brand new to the comp competition game, you have no equipment and you're looking to get something that's going to be, you know, easier to shoot, can easily get you out there to a thousand yards, 100% go buy a Creedmoor and don't look back. I will also say that where, you know, maybe in the last, you know, 10 years ago, maybe, maybe a little more difficult to find 6.5 ammo lying around. Yeah. It has become very popular as of late uh and i was actually in a local sporting goods store and they told me that the number one rifle that they were selling over black friday was a 6.5 creed more bolt action that's fascinating it really is um 
wow for around it's been around less than two decades oh yeah um and you i do want to i'm sorry well, i know <laughs> <laughs> Let me just touch on one other thing here uh, for the competitive shooting aspect, other than you know ammo availability, is going to be the recoil. The recoil on the 6.5 is going to be a fair less, a fair bit less than what you would have with 308, and this can really help with accuracy. If you're not worried about that, you know that recoil impulse coming back, and after a long range session on the shoulder, it can definitely happen. You can get that flinch going. Uh, having something that shoots a bit lighter, a bit softer, can really help your accuracy downrange. Yeah, that's a great point. I want to go back to ammo availability for a second, okay? Because it's it's really heartening to see the six point five Creedmoor, you know, picking up steam and more and more people buying it. That said, for plinking, casual training, target shooting. The, the, the sheer availability of regular plain Jane FMJ ball 308, and it's almost identical twin sister to 760 251, yep. cannot be beat. You're going to be able to get military surplus, Lake City stuff. Yep. Uh, manufacturers are loading this ammo, and I do not see very much 6.5 Creedmoor FMJ ammo on the market. No, there really isn't. It's a definitely a more specialized round. And if you just want to get out there and, you know, blast a couple mags out and not have to worry about, oh, my gosh, how am I going to afford the mortgage this month? Uh, mm -hmm. Definitely the 308 is going to be your better choice. Now, I may be exaggerating a bit much. 6.5 is not that expensive, guys. Uh, but if you compare the two, yes, it is. 308 is going to be cheaper. Uh, you know, yeah. there's no doubt about that. And like you mentioned, Dave, it's because it's just sheer availability. Everybody makes 308. Absolutely. No, you can get an M2A1 ammo can filled with, uh, you know, Lake City 762.51, which is essentially the same as 308 for yep. a pretty reasonable price, even at the at the peak of the ammo drought. 6.5 Creedmoor, you, you just... Uh, Good luck. You know, until we start loading it for the military, I just don't see a need to start cranking out mass-produced fall ammo for that. And even if they do start loading it for the military, there's going to be a, a lag, right? So it's like just because they adopt a round doesn't mean that immediately the price drops, you know, 20 cents per round and it's just everywhere. It does mm -hmm. take some uptake time before we start seeing that, you know, excess brass showing up on the secondary market, uh, you know, components being more and more available because it becomes more popular. So even if let's say that, you know, the, the Army, U.S. Army snipers say, OK, we're ditching the 300 Win Mag and the 308. We're going to exclusively 6.5 Creedmoor. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a while before we start seeing that. And even if that happens, you're, there's still going to be a ton of 308 produced for the for the military. We've got our belt-fed machine guns. Our even some of our mini guns are chambered in 308, uh, and those require a lot of bullets. So that means there's a lot of brass that gets kicked out, and that can be sold on the secondary market to hand loaders yeah. like me who love it. And to kind of continue that thought, I mean, you're talking about differences in applications. Obviously, mm -hmm. an M60 is all about pouring lead kind exactly. of in indiscriminate directions. So that's that's you're talking about FMJ ammo. Mm -hmm. If the 6.5 Creedmoor, I don't think we're going to see belt-fed machine guns chambered for that unless we start smoking wholesale amounts of crack. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're not going to see that anytime soon. It would be pretty cool. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I would love to see one and shoot one, but I'm not expecting to see a belt-fed 6.5 Creedmoor anytime soon. No, as cool as Rambo would have looked holding it, it's not going to happen. <laughs> right? I can picture it right now uh, with the belt wrapped around his arm and he's just going after it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to see that anytime soon. And it will take an uptake time to get more and more components on the market. But I will say it is getting more popular. It's getting easier to find brass than it used to be. And, you know, I think that's a great thing for the 6.5 because it really is a beautiful cartridge. It's a wonderful design. And I think that it really is the biggest innovation in long range shooting uh, in quite some time. Cool. So if you had to get one of the other, Chris, if, if you had zero rifles and had to choose between a 6.5 Creedmoor and a 308, 
what would you what would you choose? I know this is going to be surprising based on what I just said about the six five, but I'm picking the three oh eight, and the reason is ammo availability. Uh, if you're picking up a brand new rifle and you have no other rifles out there, you want to be able to get ammo left, right, and center so that you can go out there and practice and get those marksmanship skills where they need to be. Uh, if I had to pick just one, I think the versatility of the 308, uh, the fact that it can more reliably hunt those bigger game animals, uh, it can get you out to the distance that you need to. Uh, I think the 308 is enough. That's my opinion. That's what I would pick. What about you, Dave? No, I'm I'm with you there. I mean, uh, <clears throat> I like a rifle with a pedigree, like the Americans you've just mentioned. I do like to imagine using a rifle that uh, that has kind of served our country for so many decades. Absolutely, ammo availability is important to me, and um, you know, I would typically try to avoid a cartridge that might theoretically get abandoned one day. Mm -hmm. But at the rate the 6.5 Creedmoor is becoming popular at, I I really think it's going to stick around. It's got staying power. I agree. I think that it's definitely past the point of being just a boutique cartridge, uh, the newest fad. I think it's definitely here to stay. It's not going anywhere, and the popularity is only getting more and more. But uh, I, still, the 308 is not going anywhere. Uh, it yeah. is, you know, it is the the straight up uh, successor to the 30 out six. We've got tons of ammo available for it, and I just don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. Now, I'm sure there are a lot of proponents of the 4570 who said that back in the you know the 1900s, and they can point at me and laugh and say, "Hi, you're wrong, Chris." But <laughs> I, I think 308 is going to be here for a while. Yeah, to stay, as they say. Definitely. All right, so take away, get a 308 immediately if you haven't got one. 100%. Maybe try out the 6.5 Creedmoor and see if it's worth the trouble before you commit. Absolutely. If you've got a buddy who's got a 6.5 or even if you can go to a range and, uh, you know, rent a rifle and get a couple shots off with it, highly recommend you do that. And make sure if you do pick up either of those rifles or any rifles at all, make sure you get all your ammo here at ammo.com. Again, make sure you click on that link down in the description of the pinned comment, get your $20 off coupon. And while you're there, click that like and subscribe button for me. Join us and click that bell icon so you get notified every time we upload another ammunition guide or any other video here at the ammo.com YouTube channel. Thank you.